Now it's finally time for my most requested video, the WD-40 drip can. Now remember folks, it takes three things to make a fire. Fuel, oxygen, and heat. All those are present here, so use at your own risk. Be careful. The list of materials is down in the video description. First thing we need to do is take a three ounce can of WD-40 and empty it of its contents, liquid, and pressure. Find an old container that you don't use. Me, I'm using my wife's favorite coffee cup. I don't use it. Now, once it's empty, you need to slowly uncrimp that top of the can. It's a tedious operation because the valve is actually slightly larger than the hole. So once you've uncrimped it, you're going to have to get a pair of pliers and yank that thing out of there without destroying the can. Not an easy task. Luckily, the cans are cheap. You can practice on a couple of them. Um, next, we're going to need a piece of one-inch copper pipe. I had some laying around from when I piped up my ice machine. You can get some from the hardware store if you don't have any. By the way, you can't buy one inch. They'll laugh at you. Drill a hole off center so that you can move the valve closer and further away. I'll show you that in a few seconds. Once the hole is complete, grab some of that old-fashioned lead tin solder and flux and solder the pipe into the bottom of the can. I used a little piece of steel wire to stop the tube from falling into the can. Finally. Once the tube is mounted, grab and cooled off, grab a wire brush, clean the bottom of the can off so it looks pretty. See? Nice. Next is time to mount the valve. Uh, slide it into the ferrule and tighten it down as tight as tight needs to be. Now, coming up here, you're going to see there, I did not have room during some machining to allow the tube to be underneath the nut. Having it drilled off center allows you to rotate it. Now, we've got to talk about how you're going to mount it to the machine because that needs to be figured out before you bend the brass pipe. Uh, I used a small piece of wood, double-sided tape to the machine. It works great. If you need information on how to make this, can't figure it out, message me, and we can get some files to you. Pretty simple operation. Now, grab an old coat hanger and try to figure out the bends and the length of the brass tubing. You want the valve at least equal to, if not above, the spindle nut. The brass tubing cannot be bent until it is annealed. Trust me. Annealing brass tubing is very simple. Heat it up till it's a dull red. Allow it to cool gradually. Once it's cooled off, tape one side of the tubing closed and fill the tube with some table salt. Put some tape to the top of the tube to keep the table salt in. This will prevent the tube from collapsing during bending. Now take that template, coat hanger template you had for the bends and then bend the pipe with your fingers. It's very simple, very smooth. To cut the pipe to length, I just took a file on a 45 degree, put a little crease in it, and just broke it right off. Pretty simple operation. Now, before you solder the brass into the valve, you need to disassemble it. That little O-ring over there will melt. Trust me. Uh, back to that flux tin, lead, lead tin solder. Put the brass tubing in. Note its location to the handle. Solder it together. Now mount everything to the machine and look how pretty it is. I bent the handle on a U because it was getting in my way. It may or may not. You need to keep the can closed because chips will fly inside. I took the red top, glued in a couple of old magnets, and that works great. Drip rate. Um, I use about three to four drops a minute on aluminum. A little bit more for steel. Um, steel for lubrication and cooling. For aluminum, it's primarily for surface finish. Now, the nice thing about this stuff is it doesn't expand the glue 
on MDF. And as always, remember, you gotta smell nice. My favorite cologne. <laughs>